Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. In the book of Proverbs it says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. A lot of folks think they make a big impression when they run off at the mouth. Well, they make an impression all right, but not the kind they'd hoped for. If you think before you speak, you'll never have to be sorry for what you've said and wish you could take the words back. Now, some folks speak evil of one another and gossip. Others speak destructive criticism. And then there's the know-it-all. We're going to run across one of those in our story today. Let's meet him in The Loudmouth. Why are we heading back to town so soon? To meet the new ranger that's coming to us from school. Oh, a new ranger? <laughs> you mean a tender feet? <laughs> no, not tender feet. Tender foot, old timer. What? This must be a new kind. Got only one foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stumpy, you're impossible. <laughs> you ain't telling me nothing new, sonny. Uh, when does this young whippersnapper show up? On the noon train. I wonder what he's going to be like. Oh, that's what we all wonder, Henry. Well, let's get along, fellas. We don't have too much time to meet the train. You oh, please, please. Let's, let's go, go. Boy, we got here just in time. Here comes the Fireball Express now. Better not, he has his orders. Hey, there, Ranger, now. You get off the last car. Yeah, that's him, all right. New uniform and everything. Let's walk back and meet him. All aboard. Aboard. Hey, Mr. Jefferson? Yes, I'm Bill Jefferson. Uh, the name's Sands, Jerry Sands, reporting for duty, sir. I come with good recommendations, and, well, I think I'm a good ranger. No doubt, Jerry. Uh, we'll soon find out. Oh, you won't have any trouble with me as far as breaking me in. I can take over my assignment right away. You see, I'm just not the kind to stand around. I plan to make the top in just a few years. Uh, 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 you don't say. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Stumpy Jenkins, honey. Now, how do you do, Mr. Jenkins? I've heard a lot about you. You're the old codger that still has a lot on the ball. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> We call each other by our first names around here, young feller. This is Henry Scott. Hello, Jerry. Hi. And uh, Grey Wolf. How you do? How do you do? I take your bag and we go to the car. Oh, that's all right. I don't expect you older fellas to baby me. <laughs> you don't worry about that. Oh, say, uh, you'll pull your weight in the harness just like the rest of the team with us older men. Well, I'm glad for that because, well, I know a lot about rangering. I was uh, top of my class in school, and they say I'm real good. Well, yeah, you'll soon find out, sonny. Let's get to the car. Sure, anything you say. You older men ought to be able to teach me a few things, but maybe I can help you since my education is pretty good. Brother, I've seen and heard it all now, and I'm still in high school. <laughs> He's not much older than you are, pal. Boy, are we going to have fun with this guy? Yeah, I'm afraid so. If he tries to tangle with that old codger of ours, you know who will come out the winner. I sure do. But Jerry will be a lot drier behind the ears after Stumpy finishes putting him through smart and enough school. <laughs> Let's get to the car and watch what happens. It ought to be interesting. Really interesting. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. I'm anxious to get out in the field. I expect it'll take a couple of weeks to learn the few things I didn't get in school. Then I should be ready for a promotion. I got straight A-plus in college and at the Rangers school. My academic work was beyond reproach, and my field work made me the envy of every guy in the class. <laughs> yeah, if I do say so myself, I think I'll make an excellent Ranger, able to handle any given situation. Well, I can maintain self-control and control and handle men. I have resourcefulness and ingenuity and... Well, there's just no situation under which I couldn't improvise a solution, if improvisation was called for. Well, uh, I'd say you're pretty good. Oh, I've worked hard to make myself as near perfect as possible. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. Oh, what were you referring to? You can talk for three minutes without taking a breath. You have to have a pretty good windbag under your shoulders to do that. Oh, I have very good air capacity. I can stay underwater for two and a half minutes without taking another breath. I can swim a mile without any signs of exhaustion. I could be struck dumb, and it would take him a week to notice it. <laughs> well, like I was saying, about the uh, thing Here's school. Bill's house. Uh, we see you fellows in the morning, huh? Let's go to the house, Jerry. Mom's got dinner waiting for us. Okay, it'll be nice to eat something home-cooked. Uh, pick us up in the morning, Gray Wolf. Good. I hope you have a nice evening. Let me know if he talks in his sleep like he does when he's awake. <laughs> okay, I will. Good night. Good, Good night. night. time for me to retire. I always get 10 hours sleep. That's what gives me the stamina to maintain an edge over the average fella and to outsmart the uh, ones that are above average. <laughs> you have to pay a price to be good, but, well, it's worth it. Uh, you know where the guest room is, Jerry. Uh, you can hit the hay anytime you wish. Oh, thanks. I think I'll do it right now. Oh, and by the way, uh, wake me early in the morning. I want to have time to work out so as I can maintain the condition of my muscles. <clears throat> Good night. Good night, Jerry. Good night. <laughs> What's the matter, pal? <laughs> Bill, is there something wrong with that guy? Or is he all right and the rest of us crazy? Now, let's not be hasty in our opinions. He might just be trying to impress us that he's qualified for the job, that's all. After all, we don't know what he can do under fire, you know. He hasn't anything but talk to go on right now. I think he'll settle down in a few days. I'll admit he's forward and the extrovert type, but you have to be patient. This may be simply a nervous reaction that's loosened his tongue beyond control. Maybe you're right. I never thought of it that way. Do you think the extrovert type, like he is, will make a good ranger? Won't they take unusual chances and risks? Uh, I don't know, frankly. We'll see, Henry. Remember, there's one school he hasn't gone through yet. Huh? What school's that? The School of Hard Knocks. Ah, uh, you fellas take out Jerry and show him some of the good country we look after around here. I'd go, but... There's too much paperwork to be done, and there's only one way to solve that problem, and that's to do it. Okay, Bill. We show them as much as we can before it's time to come back. You're going to see something today, Sonny. There just ain't any forest as beautiful as this district. And we work mighty hard to keep it that way. Oh, I'll be glad to see it. Then maybe I can make some suggestions on how to improve it. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Let's go. Get on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Tell me, why isn't there a fire lane through the heart of this stand? Uh, because we've got two high ridges on each side of the stand. Even with a high wind, the fire would be hard put to get over those ridges. Uh, nevertheless, you know, the book says that ridges aren't good fire lanes. I'm going to tell Bill a fire lane should be cut through here as soon as possible. Now, listen here, youngster. The book's talking about wooded ridges. 
How can them there rocks burn up there? Maybe the book tells you that, huh? I'm going to write it down on my list about the fire lanes. I knew I'd find a few things to correct. They told me in school that I'm a natural for ranger work. Get it up, McKinney! Let's go! Come on, come on! What'd you stop for, Jerry? How come that stream is dammed up? Because the beavers decided it should be. Well, that's ridiculous, since when do animals know more than we do? The natural flow of a stream should never be stopped under any circumstances. Who said? I said, and I know. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know why the beaver dams are left standing? Sure, because you fellas don't knock them down. Uh Uh-huh. The facts are that it's been proven that anyone removing beaver dams damages the watershed in the area surrounding the dam. The trees die and the vegetation shrivels up. The Lord supplied the beavers with natural engineering ability to build a dam where the increased watershed is beneficial for quite an area around the dam. Well, I never read that in any of the books I've got. And I've got all that are available. Maybe you'd better read them again. You touch that beaver dam or any beaver dam anywhere in this district and Bill will skin you alive. These are uh, pretty fair biscuits, Gray Wolf. Uh-huh. Thank you, Jerry. Of course, I can make better ones. Oh, that's right. You see, proof of pudding is in eating. Next time we cook on trail, uh, you make biscuits. All right. <laughs> say, uh, who made the fire? Uh, this is my day. <laughs> I make fire. <laughs> well, I hope I never get as sloppy as you fellas after I'm a ranger for a while. <laughs> now, that fire's made all wrong. Oh, how uh, should it be made? Oh, like this here. <laughs> hey, it, uh, it went out. <laughs> yeah, sure, it went out, Tenderfoot. <laughs> Gray Wolf made the fire the way he did to catch the ground draft. You moved the logs and cut the ground draft off. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, I hadn't intended to, to move them so far. I guess I slipped. Ah, uh, you mm. slip all right, but uh, not with logs. <laughs> Bess, get over there a little so I can rub down your back legs. Get some of the trail dust off them. Yeah, how's that pile of hay for supper, Bess? Uh, think it'll fill up your old hay basket? <laughs> <laughs> she says she'll need some more by bedtime. Yeah. Sakes. Didn't her mother ever feed her when she was a colt? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, what do you fellas think we uh, should do about Jerry? I haven't even thought about him since we came back. Because I might just go out there and punch him right in his snoop. No, don't go getting all riled up about him, Henry. He's got to be taught a few lessons, that's all. Then he'll straighten out and act like he should. That's what I think, too. Jerry not really a bad fellow. Maybe he's scared, and that's why he carry on like this. Or maybe he think he really is good. I think it up to us to teach him a few things. You said it, Gray Wolf. But what'll Bill say if he finds out we're going to give Mr. Wise Guy the treatment? I don't know. Shh, shh. Here comes Bill now. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bess. Easy. Hello, fellas. Uh, what have the three of you got your heads together about? <laughs> foolish questions get foolish answers, young fella. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, Jerry gave me his list of improvements that he thinks should be made. You didn't have to put up with him all day out on the trail like we did. Gray Wolf doesn't know how to cook or make a fire. Stumpy doesn't know anything about fire lanes. And I had to stop him from tearing the beaver dams apart. And really bad. I know that. I knew it would be that way before you left. I want to thank you fellas for being so patient and exerting self-control. I know it wasn't easy. Are you going to keep him? Well, sure, Henry. Why not? Well, that is... Well, unless he changes, I don't think he'll make a good ranger. Well, that remains to be seen. We've always managed to make men out of the boys that have been sent to us before, and I don't see any reason why Jerry should be any different. <laughs> Hey, 
Jerry. Yes, Stumpy. Hey, do you know where our warehouse is? No, but I guess I can find it easy enough by asking a few questions. You can, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, suppose you run down there and get me a set of uh, bow-legged tree climbers. Oh, ho, ho, ho. what do you think I am, old-timer, a tenderfoot? Who ever heard of bow-legged tree climbers? Well, now, young feller, look here. Hmm? How am I going to get these straight-legged tree climbers to fit my old bow legs, huh? If you're such a genius, tell me that. Uh, I guess, guess you're not joking, huh? Okay, I'll, I'll get them. <laughs> oh, Stumpy. <laughs> How'd you convince Jerry to go after a pair of bow-legged tree climbers? <laughs> you could sell furnaces to the cannibals at this rate. <laughs> hey, how you convince him <laughs> to go get him? <laughs> well, I was trying to mend the pair that broke on me last week, and they can't be fixed because there's a flaw in the steel. So I rigged him up like this, and <laughs> I stuck one of them on my leg like this, and he believed me. That's all there was to it. <laughs> I've seen you fellas pull off a lot of tricks, but this one tops them all. <laughs> Tree climbers for your four legs. <laughs> I'm thrilled to death about this trip, Grey Wolf. Shows that Bill has confidence in me already, and I've only been here a short while. I guess it just proves out that I'm good. Uh, we soon find out. We be on trail for a week and take plenty long ride. You find that trail not always friendly. I can meet any situation, Grey Wolf. I think I'm intelligent enough to match wits with a dangerous trail. Trail plenty dangerous here from Loose Rock. You give horses head. I'm an expert horseman, Grey Wolf. Uh. Hey, you crazy animal, what are you trying to do? Hey, give him head. Let go of him. Or boss go over canyon. I'll show this nag who's boss. Get away from the edge. Get, get, grab him before he kills me. Give him up, kid. Hey, Help me. Oh, oh that, was, that was close. I was sure he was going to pitch us both over the side, stupid horse. You one who's stupid, not horse. Me? How dare you call... Hey, did you cut my lines? That's right. You such expert horsemen, you should know. It's always wise to give horse head when going over bad ground. Horse know that and fight you to get ahead. But you not have as much sense as horse, and you almost get killed. We go on now. We get off bad part of trail. I show you how the men cut lines. And that horse pick own way. He make it fine without help from you. You only confuse and anger him. Hey, Grey Wolf. We're riding in a circle. We have been for the last three hours. Oh, King. Oh, boy. Oh, whoa. Yeah, how you know that? How do I know it? Don't you know it, too? You've been riding these trails for th for years, and you don't know when we're lost? Now, what kind of a ranger are you, anyway? Um, not very good, according to you. You're plenty sharp. Well, I told you I was good. If I didn't notice we were riding in a circle, we'd have kept right on going around and around until the next 4th of July. Now, what would you say is true? Now you find way home. Well, don't you know how? No. I just dumb ranger. Not have much school like you, and I not smart as you. Well, that I can understand, but how do we find our way home? Oh, I sit down and rest. You figure it out. I'm really worried, Bill. It's almost noon, and Cray Wolf and Jerry aren't back yet. Yeah, I know. I'm becoming concerned myself. Something must have happened. You said it that time, young feller. Even Gray Wolf isn't safe with that maverick around loose. Hey, wait a minute. Here they come now. Huh? Yeah, it's him, all right. Yeah, Jerry looks like he's been pulled through a knot hole. 
Who isn't safe with who? I think Gray Wolf's taken our young friend down a peg or two by the looks of things. You may be right. Why, Gray Wolf has a smile on his face like a bullfrog that just ate a mess of bugs. Jerry, get yourself three hours rest. Then you're going to the big Mesa country to count small horned sheep. Alone? At night? Certainly. You want to get ahead fast in this business? And I've got to make sure you can take responsibility and get a job done. Yeah, but I've been out now without any sleep to speak of. Gray Wolf, didn't you fellas make camp last night? Uh, we have whole night's rest. Oh, I was sure of that. I want those small horn sheep counted before there's a blizzard. So we'll know how much food they'll need if they get snowed in. Get some rest and hit the trail, young man. Yeah, but, dear... Do I understand that you refuse to obey my orders? No, sir, I... I'll be on the trail at sundown. What happened, Gray Wolf? Well, I pretend to get lost, and uh, I make Jerry find way back. That's why he tired. He worry all night about how we find trail. Where were you lost? <laughs> Ten mile outside town, near Beaver Creek. We crossed Beaver Creek five times uh, before you realize it's same creek. Hey, Bill, you can't let him go out to the big mesa alone. He'll never make it. Thanks, pal. Well, thanks for what? Your faith in me. You ought to know Bill never send a tenderfoot out alone. Yeah, that's right. I guess I ought to know. I got a little excited. Oh, forget it, Henry. Stumpy, Gray Wolf. Get some rest and follow our energetic young big shot when he leaves this evening. Make sure he doesn't kill himself while he's out there counting something that doesn't exist. <laughs> now you're talking. Send him to count small horn sheep, which, of course, there ain't any. Yeah, it's pretty rough just sending him out alone at night. I'll buy that. But it's time we teach our young friend that you can't be a good ranger just with a big mouth. He hasn't done very well when he's been with you fellas. Now I want to see what he can do by himself. Perhaps his mouth won't be so loud after this experience. Bill! Bill! There's a forest fire! Yeah. Yeah, I'll get the phone. Hello, fire car. Right, we're on our way. Where is it? Just off Big Mesa. Wow, that's where Jerry, Stumpy, and Gray Wolf are. Right. Now we'll see what Jerry does in action. Gray Wolf, how are you fellas making out in there? We start backfire. Look good unless wind change. Okay. Looks like this one will be out soon. Where's Jerry? I don't know right now. Stumpy, go look for him. I join Stumpy now. Call you when we find Jerry. All right. But find him quick. Over and out. Hey, Bill! Hey, Bill! Oh, what's the matter, pal? Somebody started a fire in Bruce Canyon. It's going like crazy. Oh, no. That's our friend Jerry. He tried to backfire, only did it in the wrong place, and now we've got trouble, but good. Call for a copter. I'll instruct the man here what to do. Right. <laughs> Jerry! <laughs> Jerry, what in the name of common sense are you trying to do? I tried to start a backfire, only it isn't going to work. You say plenty. Now we're surrounded by fire. You mean we're not going to get out? We'll be killed? <laughs> not if we get out of it. Start digging the hole. What for? Let's run for it. Try to get out. You listen to me, Thunderfoot, and don't forget it. If I bash you alongside the head with my shovel, start digging. Use that shovel just like you knew how. Hard dig. Yeah, but, yeah, but, dig. Dig. You better listen to old timer if you want to get want to get out alive. Fire your crown over us soon, and then it's all over. Unless we get underground. It sure looks bad down there. That fire's going to crown any minute. Can you see any of them down there? I 
don't see any signs of life. They'd be underground by now if they were in there, wouldn't they, Bill? Yeah. Well, we're too late to get in there from the air. We'll go back and push in from the ground with our big diesel. We're right over us and we're alive. Are you so? He fainted that away. I carry him out. It's too hard yet, Grey Wolf. Let's wait a while. We ain't going no place but home now anyway. The fire won't get out of the canyon. You're right. You take it easy for us, Bell. Here comes Bill with Big Brute. Oh, who's Big Brute? That big double caterpillar tractor, Big Brute. That is a monster piece of machinery. You fellas all right? Yeah, you look like three roasted hot dogs. Yeah, we're okay. Jerry here got a thing, but he's finished. Come on, climb aboard. Here, Jerry, I'll help you up. Thank you, Grey Wolf. Let's get out of here now, young fellow! Well, Jerry, keep eating all the citrus fruit you can and drink all the milk you can hold. It'll help overcome the dehydration of your body from the terrific heat. I, I will. But first, well, I want to say something. Oh, sure, go ahead, shoot. Well, when I first came here, I thought I was pretty big stuff. I had a loud mouth and you know, small ears. Well, that's all changed now. I, I hope I can stay on here as a student ranger. And I realize that it takes years to get the experience and knowledge you fellas have. Well, I hope I haven't ruined my chances of understudying you fellas. We plan to keep you, Jerry, now that you've become a man. Well, thank you, Bill. And any time I revert back to being a loudmouth, just, well, just smack it shut, will you? Real hard. He that hath knowledge... Spareth his words. See you next week for more adventure with 